when you look at who uh, is likely to dominate the results, because of the proportional representation system, it means that no one political party is actually going to dominate the political landscape during the writing of the constitution. If anything, is expected to be divided between the Islamists, the centrists and the cent um, central parties, who, as a result, will be very focused on sort of working out some sort of constitution, while at the same time forming an interim government, which is going to have to deal with all these problems. What kind of message does what's happening in Tunisia this and descend to the rest of the Arab world, which is, of course, in turmoil still. It's of enormous interest. And, I mean, let's just look at what's happened to the three leaders. You've got one Ben Ali who fled, Hosni Mubarak is now in jail, and Colonel Gaddafi ended up being killed only last week. Um, having said that, this is the flip side. This is the positive side of all that turmoil. And Tunisia is very aware that it is going to become a benchmark, if you like, for the whole region. This is the reason why they're very concerned about ensuring that there are fair and transparent elections. We've got somewhere in the order of 5,000 election elections monitors uh, having a look. Um, but, you know, unlike uh, its neighbour who descended into civil war very quickly, Tunisia has had a relatively smooth path towards democracy and it was marred by some violent protests, particularly, particularly between Islamists and secular groups. Um, but it is, has been a relatively smooth path. But the hard work, it's a bit like getting married. I mean, everybody focuses on the day, but it's what comes afterwards is where all the hard work is going to happen.